Among the figures of the Three Kingdoms, Liu Bei is indeed one of the most inspiring and worthy of study. His journey from a humble beginning at the age of 20 to achieving success at 60, enduring changes in allegiances five times, is remarkable. He faced the trauma of his family being torn apart four times and suffered 13 major defeats, fleeing from one place to another. He went from having nothing and depending on others for shelter to eventually establishing the Shuhan regime. Liu Bei. Life was largely spent on the run, yet he never gave up, finding his moment of triumph in the Battle of Hanzhong where he finally defeated Cao Cao. In actual history, the Peach Garden Oath and the battle against Liu Bu with the three heroes didn't occur. This video series will take us through the legendary life of Liu Bei, chronologically. If you like this video a little bit to point praise evaluation subscription, your support is my creation of video the biggest power. Liu Bei was born in 161 AD and was a descendant of Liu Sheng, King Jing of Zhongshan, who was a son of Emperor Jing of Han. Liu Bei. Father, Liu Hong, died early, leaving him and his mother to live a life of hardship, weaving mats and selling shoes for a living. At the southeast corner of Liu Bei house, there was a mulberry tree about five zhang tall, resembling a carriage canopy from a distance. Passersby often felt that this tree was not of the ordinary world and believed that someone of great importance would emerge from this family. As a child, Liu Bei would play under this tree with his cousins and ambitiously declare, one day, I will ride in a carriage with a feather canopy like this. His uncle, Liu Ziqing, cautioned him, warning, do not speak carelessly and bring calamity upon our family. In 175 AD, when Liu Bei was 15, his mother sent him to study outside. With the support of his cousin, he and Gong Sun Zan became students of Lu Zhi, Gong Sun Zan. Older than Liu Bei, became a good friend and was regarded as an elder brother by Liu Bei. Liu Bei was not particularly fond of studying but enjoyed dogs, horses, music, and fine clothing. He was tall, standing at 7 feet 5 inches, with hands that hung down to his knees and ears visible when looking forward. Although not very talkative, he treated others well and his emotions were not easily discerned from his expression. He liked to associate with heroes and local warriors vied to attach themselves to him. Coincidentally, wealthy merchants like Zhang Shiping and Su Shuang came to Zhuo County to trade horses, and they provided Liu Bei with his first significant financial backing, enabling him to assemble his own troop. In 184 AD, the Yellow Turban Rebellion erupted. Liu Bei organized a volunteer army in Zhuoxian to fight against the Yellow Turban Army. The young Zhang Fei and Guan Yu joined him. Although the Peach Garden Oath was fictional, the three of them were as close as brothers, sharing the same bed. When Liu Bei attended various banquets, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu would stand by his side throughout the day. At the age of 23, Liu Bei led his troops and achieved military success in the battle to suppress the rebellion. Four years later, Liu Bei participated in quelling the rebellion led by Zhang Chu. Due to his military achievements in these campaigns, he was appointed as the county magistrate of Anxixie. However, before Liu Bei could settle into his new role, the imperial court issued an order for a careful selection of officials. Those who became officials through military achievements were subject to a thorough selection process for elimination. The postal inspector of that jurisdiction decided to dismiss Liu Bei. When Liu Bei learned of this, he went to the post station where the inspector was staying to seek an audience. The inspector, feigning illness, refused to meet Liu Bei. Holding a grudge, Liu Bei bound and whipped the inspector 200 times, and then, together with Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, abandoned his office and fled. Later, the Grand General He Jin sent Guan Qiu Yi to recruit soldiers in Danyang, and Liu Bei joined along the way. In Xiapi, he fought valiantly against bandits and was appointed as the chief of Xiamixian, but soon resigned again. He later held positions such as the magistrate of Gaotang and the chief of Gaotang. When Gaotangxian was overrun by bandits, Liu Bei fled to Gong Sun Zan and was appointed as a separate division's marshal. In 191 AD, Liu Bei, together with Tian Kai, the governor of Qingzhou, fought against Yuan Shao, the governor of Jizhou. Due to his repeated military merits, Liu Bei was promoted to the acting magistrate of Pingyuan Xian and later became the chancellor of Pingyuan Guo. Liu Bei not only repelled bandits externally but also was kind and generous internally. Commoners, not just scholars, could sit and dine with him without discrimination. During his tenure as Chancellor of Pingyuan, Liu Bei was deeply loved by the people. However, a local named Liu Ping, who did not agree with Liu Bei governance, incited an assassin to kill him. Unaware of this, Liu Bei treated the assassin with great courtesy. Touched by this kindness, the assassin could not bring himself to carry out the assassination and revealed the plot before leaving. 
Soon after, the remnants of the Yellow Turban Army led by Guanghai attacked Beihe, Kongrong. The Chancellor of Beihai was besieged by a large force and in a critical situation, he sent Hai Shizi to break through the siege and seek help from Liu Bei. Astonished, Liu Bei said, Chancellor Kongrong of Beihai actually knows of me. He immediately sent 3,000 elite troops with Hai Shizi to Beihai for aid. Hearing of the arrival of reinforcements, the Yellow Turban Army scattered and fled, and Kongrong was thus relieved of the siege. Later, when Yuan Shao attacked Gong Sun Zan, Liu Bei and Tian Kai camped in the east of Qi. N194 AD, Cao Cao, under the pretext of avenging his father, launched another attack on Xuzhou, which was unable to resist under the rule of Tao Tian. Tao Tian sought help from Tian Kai, the governor of Qingzhou, Tian Kai, and Liu Bei went together to assist. Liu Bei brought over a thousand of his own troops, as well as mixed cavalry from Yuzhou and hungry people numbering in the thousands. After arriving in Xuzhou, Tao Tian added another 4,000 troops to Liu Bei force. Gus, Liu Bei came under Tao Tian command. Meanwhile, Zhang Miao and Chen Gong rebelled and welcomed Lu Bu, attacking Cao Cao, leading to the loss of his base. Cao Cao then retreated to Yanzhou. Tao Tian appointed Liu Bei as the governor of Yuzhou and stationed him in Xiaopei. In 195 AD, when Tao Tian fell gravely ill, Liu Bei took over Xuzhou under persuasion from others, thus securing his own base. In 196 AD Liu Bei kindness backfired. While he was confronting the army of Yuan Shu, Liu Bu, whom Liu Bei had once sheltered, took advantage of the situation to launch a surprise attack on Xia Pi. Even Liu Bei's wife was captured by Liu Bu. This sudden turn of events caused disarray within Liu Bei troops, leading to a major defeat at the hands of Yuan Shu. With no other options, Liu Bei had to turn back and negotiate peace with Liu Bu, returning to his starting point at Xiao Pei. After painstakingly gathering an army of over 10,000 men, Liu Bei was again threatened by Liu Bu, who feared his resurgence and scattered Liu Bei hard-earned forces. Disheartened, Liu Bei went to Xuchang and sought refuge with Cao Cao in Xudu. Cao Cao provided Liu Bei with troops, horses, and provisions, appointing him as the governor of Yuzhou. Henceforth, Liu Bei was known as Liu Yuzhou. In 198 AD, seeking revenge, Liu Bei intercepted a shipment of gold meant for Liu Bu, which led to an attack by Liu Bu army. Although Cao Cao sent Xia Houdun to rescue Liu Bei first, he was defeated by Liu Bu, and Liu Bei was forced to flee alone, with his family once again captured by Liu Bu. While fleeing, Liu Bei encountered Cao Cao, who was leading an army to campaign against Liu Bu. Liu Bei then joined forces with Cao Cao to attack Liu Bu, and after Liu Bu surrender, he urged Cao Cao to execute Liu Bu. Later, Liu Bei returned to Xudu with Cao Cao and was appointed as the general of the left. In 199 AD, the Minister of Chariots and Cavalry, Dong Cheng, received a secret imperial decree from Emperor Xian of Han. Initially, Liu Bei hesitated to join the plot. Later, during a conversation with Cao Cao, who said, the only heroes in this world are you and I, Liu Bei dropped his chopsticks in shock, realizing Cao Cao's ambition and that he could not coexist with him, and thus conspired with Dong Cheng and others. At that time, Cao Cao had dispatched Liu Bei with Zhu Ling to attack Yuan Shu, who died of illness en route. Afterwards, Liu Bei marched to Xia Pi, killed the governor of Xuzhou, Chezhou, and left Guan Yu to guard Xia Pi and act as the governor, while he himself returned to Xiao Pei. The people of Donghai, Changxi, and several other counties and districts rallied around Liu Bei, giving him tens of thousands of troops. Thus, he joined forces with Yuan Shao to resist Cao Cao. Cao Cao sent the Grand Administrator of Pei Guo, Liu Dai, and the Colonel of Fu Feng, Wang Zhong, to attack, but they were repelled by Liu Bei. In the spring of 200 AD, the secret imperial edict affair was exposed. Cao Cao personally led a campaign against Liu Bei, who was defeated, and Guan Yu was captured. Liu Bei fled to Qingzhou, where the governor, Yuan Tan, welcomed him. Liu Bei had previously recommended Yuan Tan for his talents. Liu Bei then accompanied Yuan Tan to Pingyuan and sent word to Yuan Shao, who traveled 200 li from Yecheng to meet Liu Bei and stayed for over a month. During this time, Liu Bei scattered soldiers gradually regrouped. In July of 200 AD, the leader of the Yellow Turban Army in Runan, Liu Pi, and others defected to Yuan Shao. Yuan Shao sent Liu Bei with an army to raid south of Xudu, joined by Guan Yu, who had escaped from Cao Cao to rejoin Liu Bei. Cao Cao dispatched Cao Ren to attack Liu Bei. Facing an unfavorable battle, Liu Bei returned to Yuan Shao, planning to leave him under the pretext of joining forces with Liu Biao, and led his troops back to Runan, allying with the remnants of the Yellow Turbans led by Gong Du. Cao Cao 
sent Taiyang to attack, but he was killed by Liu Bei. In 201 AD, Cao Cao personally campaigned against Liu Bei, who then sought refuge with Liu Biao. Liu Biao personally welcomed Liu Bei outside the city and treated him with great honor, allowing him to station his troops in Xinye. Many heroes of Jingzhou flocked to join Liu Bei, arousing Liu Biao's suspicion and causing him to secretly guard against Liu Bei. In 202 AD, Liu Biao ordered Liu Bei to lead an army north to Yexian, where Xia Houdun, Yu Jin, and Yi Dian led their forces in resistance. Liu Bei feigned a retreat, setting an ambush. Li Dian, suspecting a trap, advised caution, but Xia Houdun did not listen and was defeated by Liu Bei. Fortunately, Li Dian arrived in time to assist, and Liu Bei, recognizing his numerical inferiority, retreated. During his years in Jingzhou, feeling the weight of advancing age without significant achievements, Liu Bei lamented his unfulfilled ambitions. He proposed to Liu Biao to seize the opportunity of Cao Cao campaign against the Wu Wan to launch a surprise attack on Xu Du, but Liu Biao did not accept the plan. In 207 AD, at the age of 46, Liu Bei visited Zhuge Liang in Longzhong and, after three visits to his thatched cottage, received Zhuge Liang, Longzhong plan. In 208 AD, Cao Cao led a large army southward. At this time, Liu Biao had died, and his younger son Liu Tong succeeded him, surrendering to Cao Cao, Liu Bei. Stationed in Fancheng, was unaware of Cao Cao's sudden approach until he reached Wanche. He then led his army away, passing through Xiangya. Here, Zhuge Liang advised Liu Bei to attack Liu Tong and seize Jingzhou, but Liu Bei, sharing the same lineage with Liu Biao, was reluctant to do so. Outside the city, Liu Bei called out to Liu Tong, who, out of fear, did not dare to come out. Many of Liu Tong's subordinates and numerous scholars of Jingzhou defected to Liu Bei, by the time he reached Dangyang, he had amassed an army of over 100,000 and thousands of supply wagons, traveling over 10 li per day. Liu Bei also dispatched Guan Yu with hundreds of boats, instructing him to meet at Jiangli. Some advised Liu Bei, we should quickly secure Jiangli. Although we have many people, we have too few soldiers. How will we resist if Cao Cao comes? But Liu Bei replied, to accomplish great things, one must value people above all. How can I bear to abandon these people who have left their homes to follow me? In 208 AD, Liu Bei formed an alliance with Sun Quan, and under the command of Zhou Yu, their combined forces decisively defeated Cao Cao at the Battle of Red Cliffs. Following this victory, Liu Bei captured the four commanderies of Jingzhou to the south. He also borrowed the city of Jiangling in Jingzhou from Sun Quan, thereby controlling five commanderies in Jingzhou. In 211 AD, Liu Zhang, following the advice of Zhang Song, sent Fa Zheng to invite Liu Bei into Shu to assist him against Zhang Lu. During this period, Fa Zheng and Pang Tong persuaded Liu Bei to consider conquering Shu. Liu Bei left Zhuge Liang and Guan Yu to guard Jingzhou, and led tens of thousands of infantry into Shu, meeting Liu Zhang at Fu advisors like Zhang Song, Fa Zheng, and Pang Tong all urged Liu Bei to seize control from Liu Zhang, but Liu Bei refused, citing the need to win the trust of the people in this new territory. Liu Zhang recommended Liu Bei to be the acting Grand Marshal and Commander of the Imperial Secretariat, providing him with troops to lead the Baishui army against Zhang Lu. Liu Bei stationed his army at Jiameng, focusing on building goodwill and loyalty among the people. In 212 AD, after the plot involving Zhang Song was exposed and he was executed, relations between Liu Bei and Liu Zhang deteriorated. Following a plan proposed by Pang Tong, Liu Bei summoned and executed Yang Huai, the commander of the Baishui army, and absorbed his troops. He sent Huang Zhong and Zhuo Ying south to attack Liu Zhang, capturing Fucheng. In 213 AD, Liu Zhang forces tried to block Liu Bei at Fu, but were defeated. Liu Zhang then sent Li Yan and Fei Guan to lead the troops in Yanzhu to resist Liu Bei, but Li Yan surrendered to him. Liu Bei army grew stronger and spread out to pacify various counties. He also called in Zhuge Liang, Zhang Fei, and Zhao Yun to lead troops in Tushu, Zhang Ren. And Liu Xun retreated to defend Luocheng, but when Liu Bei attacked, Zhang Ren was killed in battle. Liu Xun remained fortified in the city. During the siege of Luocheng, Pang Tong was struck by an arrow and died. In 214 AD, after nearly a year's siege, Luocheng was captured. Liu Bei, along with Zhuge Liang, Zhang Fei, and Zhao Yun, then surrounded Chengdu, during this time, Liu Bei sent the postal inspector of Tianying, Li Hui, to persuade Ma Chao to surrender. Ma Chao arrived in Chengdu, and Liu Bei appointed him to station his troops north of the city, causing fear within the city walls. Then sent Tianyong to negotiate Liu Zhang's surrender, subsequently taking over as the governor of Yizhou and employing many talents from Shu. 
In 215 AD, Sun Quan, seeing Liu Bei control over Yizhou, wanted to reclaim Jingzhou. Liu Bei responded, I will give you Jingzhou after I secure Liangzhou. This angered Sun Quan, who then sent Yu Meng to seize the three commanderies of Changsha, Lingling, and Guiya. In response, Liu Bei led 50,000 troops to Gongan and sent Guan Yu to Yiyang. In the same year, Cao Cao secured Hanzhong, and Zhang Lu fled to Baxi. Upon hearing this, Liu Bei sought peace with Sun Quan, agreeing to divide Jingzhou, while also sending Huang Quan to welcome Zhang Lu. However, Zhang Lu had already surrendered to Cao Cao. Cao Cao left Xiaohou Yuan and Zhang He to defend Hanzhong and made several incursions into Baxi. Liu Bei sent Zhang Fei to fight Zhang He at Wako, resulting in Zhang He defeat and retreat to Nanzheng. Liu Bei then returned to Chengdu. In 218 AD, Liu Bei led an army to attack Hanzhong, sending Wu Lan and Lei Tong to capture Wu Du, but they were killed by Cao Hu. Liu Bei occupied Yangping Guan and faced off against Xiaohou Yuan and Zhang He. In 219 AD, Liu Bei abandoned Yangping Guan, crossed south over the Mian River, and camped at Ding Junshan. Xiaohou Yuan advanced to contest Ding Junshan but was killed by Huang Zhu. Later, Cao Cao personally led a large army to contest Hanzhou. Upon hearing this, Liu Bei said, even if Cao Cao comes, he will achieve nothing. I am certain to have Han Chuan. When Cao Cao arrived at Hanzhong, Liu Bei gathered his forces to defend strategically. Huang Zhong and Zhao Yun intercepted Cao Cao army supplies at the Han River, causing increasing numbers of Cao Cao troops to flee. Eventually, Cao Cao was forced to retreat. Liu Bei won the Battle of Hanzhong and sent Liu Feng and Meng Da to occupy Xiangyu. In the same year, Liu Bei was proclaimed the king of Hanzhou. However, not long after occupying Hanzhong, Guan Yu launched a northern campaign. Despite flooding the enemy's seven armies, capturing Yu Jin, beheading Pang De, and striking Ah into the heart of China by besieging Cao Ren in Fancheng, he faced a setback. Lu Meng, of Eastern Wu, dressed in plain clothes, crossed the river and captured Jingzhou. Guan Yu was captured by Wu forces and executed. In 221 AD, after Cao Pi usurped the Han to establish the Wei dynasty, Liu Bei proclaimed himself emperor in Chengdu, restoring the Han dynasty under the era name Zhang Wu. In the same year, to avenge Guan Yu, Liu Bei launched a campaign against Eastern Wu, during which Zhang Fei was killed by his subordinates. Sun Quan sent envoys to negotiate peace, but Liu Bei, in rage, refused. Wu General Lu Xun and others camped in Zigui, where they were defeated by Shu General Wu Ba, Liu Bei. Army occupied Zigui, and he sent Ma Liang to ally with the indigenous tribes of Wu Li. In the spring of 222 AD, Liu Bei sent Huang Quan to command the northern naval forces while he led the land army. In July, his forces were defeated by Lu Xun at the Battle of Yiling, with generals Feng Xi, Zhang Nan, and others killed in action. Liu Bei retreated to Yong'an. Sun Quan, Learning of Liu Bei stationing at Bai Di, became fearful and sent envoys to negotiate peace, which Liu Bei accepted. In March 223 AD, at the age of 63, Liu Bei died after entrusting his young son, Liu Chan, to his Chancellor Zhuge Liang and Minister of the Imperial Secretariat Li Yan. On his deathbed, he advised Liu Chan to treat Zhuge Liang as his father and cautioned him against underestimating the consequences of evil deeds, however small, and neglecting good deeds, however insignificant.